Hello and welcome to another edition of Be Still My Soul and today we're looking at Psalm 32. Psalm 32 is titled A Maskell, that means it's a teaching poem and it teaches us about our greatest problem, sin. There are seven confession or penitential psalms in the book of Psalms and this is the second of them and St Augustine, who wrote a lot about the Bible and about the Christian life, said that this was central to Christian theology and experience because sin is central to Christian theology and experience and sin is really serious. Maybe David wrote this psalm after his experience with Bathsheba. You might remember uh, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He had her husband killed. He thought he got away with murder and adultery, but you can't get away from guilty feelings that are deep inside you. You can't get away from uh, an agony of conscience that can really weigh you down. You can think that nobody else knows about something, but the guilt and the shame that you feel can make you rot away from the inside. David experienced that, but he also experienced the joy of knowing that he's been forgiven. Forgiven adultery, forgiven murder, forgiven all his sins. And that's what this psalm is about, the joy of knowing that you are forgiven. Three things I want us to briefly look at. First of all, uh, there's relief, and then we see the recovery, and then we see the rejoicing. First of all, relief. David begins with these words. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Blessed or happy. Blessed really is a kind of uh, biblical word for, for being very happy, being favoured. The happy person... The favoured person is the one who knows that they are not righteous. That they, they know that they're not good and they know what to do about it. They confess their sin. You see, that's what David does. He confesses his sin and he experiences God's forgiveness. When he didn't confess it, what happened to him? Well, verse 3, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. My bones groaned, my body groaned, like, it, it, as it were, it roared like a lion. That's what the word groaning here means. Like a lion with its prey. You see, one of the thing that, things that sin does is it burdens us. It, it diminishes us. It blights our lives with, sin, uh, with sadness and with misery. You see, we think if we do what we want, we are free. But there's a guilt and there's a shame that comes from sin, which enslaves us and traps us. And so we end up carrying our sin around with us like a suitcase. Day and night, David says, verse 4, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Not only do we carry it around like a suitcase, but God can put his hand upon us and make us feel even heavier because he wants us to deal with our sin. He, want, he wants to call us back to himself. And that's what David does in verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you. I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Those are three of the worst words for sin. Sin missing the mark iniquity that 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 evil within our hearts the kind of bentness towards ourselves, and then finally transgressions the actual uh, not keeping the rules transgressing the rules and yet what does it say it says that god covers those things deals with those things you know when we sin what do we like to do we like to hide we, we like to try and cover up 
like children hiding behind a curtain when they know they've done something wrong. Or we try and do that. We try and do that with words. We try and do that with actions. We, we, we try and cover up our mistakes and our sins. But actually, here God covers them up. In fact, he, he as it were, bears them away. And he did that through Jesus Christ. He removes our sins in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took upon himself our sins and bore the burden for them and the guilt and the shame that went along with them. And when we confess our sins, we can look to the cross and see what Jesus has done and know that our sins have been forgiven. And knowing that our sins have been forgiven brings a relief to our lives. It's a great relief to know that your sins are forgiven. Not on the basis of what we do, but on the basis of what Jesus has done. You know, when you are, when your relationship with somebody's broken and the two of you apologise and then you come back together, there's a relief there. Well, how much more is there a relief when we do business with God and we're right with God again? That's why David encourages all of us to acknowledge our sin to the Lord. He says, therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. God is a God who brings relief to our lives when we acknowledge our sin to him. But second, we see here the recovery. You see... God doesn't just want to forgive us our sins, but he wants a relationship with you and me. Not just forgiveness, but fellowship. And that's better than mere forgiveness. That's the goal of forgiveness. God promises a personal relationship. That's what we see in verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you, my eye being my favour, my face. I will look upon you to do you good, instructing your life, guiding your life, protecting your life, preserving your life, governing your life for your good. You see, this is a, what a personal relationship with God involves. God watching over us, teaching us, instructing us, guiding our lives for good just as a mother brings up her child looking after him teaching him so God is our teacher who loves us and cares for us and and that comes after you've confessed your sin and a sign that you've confessed your sin is that you want to learn from the Lord you want to learn from him if you say well I, I, I've confessed my sin but I don't want to listen to what God has got to say well you've not actually done business with the Lord then because if you know your sins forgiven you don't want to live in them anymore you know if you've been cleaned up you don't want to get yourself dirty again and so that's what he says in verse 9. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curved with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near. He says, don't just be like a, a bit and a bridle on a horse that forces the horse to go in a particular direction out of duty. Don't obey God because you have to, but obey God because you want to. Obey God out of love for God. You know, sometimes God uses a bit and a bradley in our lives to bring us back to himself, to, di to direct us, to guide us. But that shouldn't be the primary way that we're led. The primary way should be, God, teach me your way. Show me your paths. Help me to do what you want me to do, to live as you want me to live. Because if we are loyal to God and submit to his word, he will instruct us. He will surround us. He will do us good. And finally, we see here rejoicing in verses 10 and 11. Many of this are the sorrows of the wicked. Do you know, we think if we can do what we want and live as we please, then we'll be happy. Choice, freedom equals happiness. But it doesn't. How miserable are people in Manchester today? <laughs> Many are the sorrows of the wicked. If you live a wicked life, if you live a life turning away from God and what God wants, it will bring misery. It will bring sadness. It just does. 
brings holiness. Living as God wants you to live brings happiness to your life. Steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, O you upright in heart. You see, living righteously, living as God wants, brings joy. See, when your heart is pure, when your mind, then your mind will be full of, full of joy. When, you, when, you, when your heart and your conscience is clear, you can sleep at night. You can rejoice during the day. You can be happy because you have been forgiven. You see, when you know that Jesus Christ has died for you, and when you put your trust in him, when you confess your sins, then you can know that he is faithful and just and will forgive you your sins and will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When you know that cleansing, you'll experience that joy. The joy of forgiveness. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless.